Ever since Train arrived on the Switch, I've been a fan, and despite a few hiccups along the way, I'd contend that it stands out as one of the most inventive puzzle platformers available. But as we do approach the fifth installment in the series, the question arises, can it sustain its appeal? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner, and if you find this review helpful today, consider subscribing. Your support, it goes a long way in helping the channel grow. As a long-standing fan of the Train series, I can confidently say that the narrative remains strong in Train 5, A Clockwork Conspiracy. Now, picking up where Train 1 through 4 left off, we've solidified our status as heroes of this fantastical realm, though life may not be perfect for our trio of heroes, returning are Amadeus the Wizard, Asaya the Thief, and Pontius the Knight. Amadeus is having marital troubles, Saya finds herself once again on the wrong side of the law, and Pontius is facing a competition from the title of Clockwork Knights. So as the fence unfold, it quickly becomes apparent that something strange is a threat. This new army may not be everything they're cracked up to be, even if they do promise to protect the population. Before we know it, the world is in grave danger, our heroes are being framed for the unfolding offence, and their loved ones are also in danger. They're even out to strip our heroes of their magical powers. What follows is not only an adventure to save their reputation now, but one to save the world they love and their families too. These are some of the highest stakes the series has seen yet, but it manages to pull it off and also let's not forget the humour this series is known for, the cast still packs the trademark humour and it hits the mark more often than it misses. Also the supporting cast, they are great fun as well. Trine 5 A Clockwork Conspiracy, like its predecessors, is a puzzle platformer that supports both single player, local co-op, and online support for up to four players. Now, the game offers two unique modes, Classic and Unlimited. Classic mode allows a maximum of three players without any character duplication, while Unlimited mode accommodates up to four players, offering the flexibility to choose the same character multiple times. I spent the majority of my time here in single player mode, where you can freely switch between our three heroes with a simple tap of the left and right triggers. Each character has their own unique health bar, but they do share a maximum of three lives before you're sent back to the last checkpoint. Thankfully, however, these they are quite frequent. Alongside health meters and the combined repertoire of skills of our heroes is crucial as all three characters are needed to overcome the forthcoming obstacles. Starting out, we have Pontius R. Knight with his heavy charges and slams, as well as the most diverse combat abilities. Saya, our nimble character, is skilled with a grappling hook and a trustworthy bow and arrow. Lastly, Amadeus, our mage, has perhaps the most unique skills. He can conjure a variety of metal objects useful in a multitude of scenarios such as crates, platforms, and spheres. This is merely, then, the beginning of the journey. You see, the reason for this is part of the adventure is also centered around collecting up skill points that can be transformed into new abilities from each character's skill tree. Each character actually possesses a unique skill tree individually, promising a fast array of skills at your disposal. Some of the upgrades include multiple arrows and magnetized platforms as a couple of examples. The challenges then are nearly constant, and often they'll have you trying several solutions before you do succeed. What I do appreciate here is the fact that there's often more than one solution, so you can let your creativity take over in these moments. I also appreciated the gradual difficulty curve that always felt fair. Even if I did get stuck on a number of occasions here, when I did finally succeed, my reaction was always, I should have gotten that sooner. While the majority of the game then finds you in control of this trio, it occasionally breaks this formula, asking you to overcome sections independently with a specific character. I enjoyed this aspect, it's a good excuse to practice a particular skill set, as there is quite a bit going on here in relation to abilities. It also promises replayability then with an adaptive difficulty system in relation to puzzles and combat. Now this is a difficult element for me to test, but I'd describe it as overall challenging but fair with solutions, always proving reasonable once you figured them out. Alongside the puzzles then, as I mentioned there, we do see the return of combat, which much like previous entries feels like the weakest link. 
Gradually, each character becomes more proficient on the battlefield, but these moments feel more like brief distractions rather than necessary parts of the experience. Pontius does the majority of the work here, swinging his sword and using his shield to deflect incoming attacks, while Asaya and Amadeus lend their useful skills with a bow and arrow and levitation and magic. However, the combat is never particularly challenging or robust enough to be memorable, even if it does play into the themes of the unfolding story. The boardist design decision here then is Train's attempt at incorporating boss encounters. They aim to blend puzzle solving aspects with combat, and it's definitely more successful than the core combat experience but it still doesn't match the you know, overall puzzle gameplay, and I would be fine honestly without them. On the heels of this then, other issues with gameplay have surfaced, with a prominent one being Amadeus's levitation ability. And in the context of puzzles, it showcases the creativity of the team behind Train 5, but during combat, it's just not quite as responsive as I had hoped. A good example is a boss fight around the midway mark that hurls projectiles in your direction. Now the goal here is to really seize these and throw them back, but the controls, they just aren't flexible enough to let you target and grab the specific one you do want. It leads to a sequence of what I would describe as trial and error. Additionally, I encountered a bug around the halfway point where the characters and the environments were intermittently flashing on and off the screen. Now I managed to navigate this section easily as it didn't disrupt the gameplay flow, but I'd appreciate a patch for this issue as soon as possible. The only other feature then worth mentioning is the unlockable cosmetics, which gradually become accessible as you do progress. I personally didn't explore this feature too deeply, mainly because when I attached an item, it appeared on all three characters. This caused a bit of confusion for me when switching between them on the fly. As for the overall gameplay then, like Train 5 takes what we are familiar with, introduces several tweaks, and adds a handful of new features. The results I'd call them mixed, but on the whole, I still had a great time. It's a unique formula that is unmatched in the genre, and they continue to strengthen their storytelling abilities. The game does, however, continue to struggle with developing a combat system that can stand up to the fantastic and responsive platforming and puzzle solving elements. Visually, Trine 5 holds true to the aesthetics we've come to appreciate from Trine 4, retaining many of the same character models, a style that has been progressively shaped across the series. It carries this distinct Pixar-esque vibe in its design, but with each subsequent game, our trio of heroes grow increasingly endearing. The fifth installment also boasts the most cutscenes of any entry to date, with a sequence almost constantly accompanying each of the game's 20 chapters. The storybook style, a feature we first encountered in the original game as well, it makes a comeback here, however it is now exclusively reserved for the mission select menu which I think works really well. When it comes to the actual core gameplay then, the presentation there, the 2.5D world and character animations look fantastic. Character movements are rendered beautifully with each action carrying a distinctive flair that reflects the character it originates from. The locations are also diverse, ranging from desolate landscapes to opulent castles brimming with riches. And although the combat might not be, you know, the most exhilarating, the enemies are by far the most intriguing, featuring some screen-filling boss encounters and that, of course, original clockwork design. Audio then continues the trend of high quality production with full of voice acting throughout and a stellar cast behind the delivery. Trine largely succeeds because of its likeable heroes and much of this success it can be attributed to the voice cast that bring them to life. They are also accompanied then by a supporting cast that matches their quality. And yeah, outside of dialogue for audio we get a suitably fantastical and musical score that reinforces the action along with sound effects that bolster the on-screen actions. So overall, a Triumph 5 packs a compelling storyline, expertly integrated puzzle mechanics and visually impressive graphics. Its audio design also nicely ties up the overall production quality. However, it does have a few shortcomings. Its combat system often feels disjointed from the central experience, and the visual glitch proved annoying rather than game-breaking. 
Despite this though, the game remained a fun experience. My only wish would be for less frequent combat, allowing the game to lean into its strengths more. It's really kind of time to accept it's perhaps not the best combination. So overall, whether you play solo or as a group, if you are a fan of the genre, I think there is a lot to like here. And for me, it's a good 7 out of 10. Once there is a fix for the visual glitch, I'd happily bump this score to a great 8 because while a minor, it did hamper my immersion. So will you be checking out Train Fiver? Let me know in the comments with that. Hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.